Behind me is an Asteroids Deluxe arcade cabinet. It's not a replica, it's the real thing from 1980. And you know that spot where you put your quarters, like here, I'll show you real quick. That spot where you put your quarters, right there, that spot, there's something really cool. There's something really cool behind there. And before I show you the cool thing that is behind that door, I wanna talk about the arcade cabinet. This was sold to me for 60 bucks uh, because it wasn't working. It was just sitting in a warehouse rotting and they said, well, I could probably get 60 bucks for the parts for it, so I'll sell the whole thing to you for 60 bucks, which is awesome. I got it home, I immediately tore it apart and found the big problem that they were having. Uh, this is the circuit board that came with it and you can see right here on the circuit board, it's burnt out and this is definitely beyond my skill to repair. So I, I gave this to my dad and I said, hey, can you put a frame on this because it looks really cool and he did and it does and it sits here in the nerd nest with me. Something else uh, that was inside there that I ended up pulling out. Actually, let me go grab it. It's the inside paper that would basically tell arcade owners what they would have to do in order to like change the settings, trying to get the reflection off there, change the settings of the arcade cabinet. Uh, my wife framed this for me because it's ridiculously cool and I just took it off the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and set that down. Now, if you know anything about Asteroids Deluxe, you know that the original controls don't have joysticks, and it certainly doesn't have two joysticks. So I had to take the original console out and replace all of that stuff with homemade stuff, essentially. I bought the joysticks and stuff online, and there's links in the description for all the stuff that I'm using today. Um, I bought all that stuff online, and then I went to my dad's house and used his tools, because I'm not handy, he helped me with this, but I used his tools in order to make this wooden console uh, for the, the arcade. So you might be wondering, what's powering this thing behind me? Well, if you've been here on this channel for a while, you're probably not gonna be surprised at the answer, so let me show it to you. Get the camera pointed in the right direction. Here's the arcade cabinet, and as I come down here, there's the door, and sure enough, it's powered by a Steam Deck. I mean, how cool is that, that it's powered by a Steam Deck and it works. Like this thing works with a Steam Deck as its power source. So here you can see I've got my arcade cabinet set up. Uh, player one, I'm gonna go ahead and select MAME and I will select X-Men. I love this game. It's a really, really fun co-op game from, my, from when I was younger. And once it boots up, I will insert a coin by pressing this button right here. I gotta wait until the, the check goes through. There we go, the game is now running and I'm going to insert a bunch of coins. I got a lot of lives here and I will select Storm and we will hit start and you can see, there we go. The game is running and all of this is going through the Steam Deck. So what did I, how do I get all of this set up? It's actually not too hard. Um, there were some stumbling blocks that I ran into that I will talk about all of that stuff uh, in the video, but if you want to do this yourself, I'm going to put links in the description down below to all of the stuff that I used. All right, let's sit down and get this figured out. So originally I set this up with a Raspberry Pi with RetroPie installed and that worked great. But when I had the idea to put the deck in charge of the cabinet, I ran into an issue. I'll talk about that issue in a second because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why am I doing this? Well, mainly because I love arcade games. That's the reason I got this arcade cabinet in the first place. But once I got the deck, I wanted to be able to take these games with me. Now, one option that I have is to set up save games and high scores all online so that no matter which place I'm playing, they're available as long as I have an internet connection. But the Steam Deck is a portable system, which means internet access isn't always going to be available, meaning my, my saves and my high scores, they're not going to be there. And it makes kind of syncing between those two things kind of a nightmare. I wanted to avoid that, so I came up with the solution, why not just put the Steam Deck inside the arcade cabinet? But speaking of the cabinet, 
You don't have to have an arcade cabinet to do this. You can use the parts that I did and then build an arcade cabinet yourself, or you can simply set all of this up in a control stick that you can set on your lap. I even listed a pre-built one in the description that should work with the Steam Deck. Okay, back to the problem. The controls that I bought were joysticks and buttons which come with the Dragon Rise USB encoder. Essentially, you place your joystick and buttons wherever it is that you determine that are the best layout for you, and then you hook them all up to the encoder, and then you hook the encoder up to the USB port on your Steam Deck dock. Now, even though everything worked absolutely fine on the RetroPie, on the Steam Deck, I ran into an issue. Everything was rotated, all of the controls, 90 degrees to the left. And I could easily fix all of this in Steam input, but there was a rub. The Steam Deck and Steam OS was recognizing the Dragon Rise USB encoder as a virtual Steam input. And everything that I adjusted to make the virtual, uh, the Dragon Rise encoder work correctly, where up is up and down is down, ended up retranslating all of my controls on the Steam Deck to be rotated 90 degrees to the right which was absolutely frustrating. So I shelved the idea for a bit, but then I saw this great tutorial on how to install Batocera on Steam Deck from ETA Prime. I figured if I set up a separate operating system for arcade games, it would be way easier than trying to shoehorn everything into SteamOS, and any changes that I made wouldn't mess up my deck settings thanks to the virtual controller problem. Now what's really cool about this setup is that all you have to do is set up Batocera on an SD card and your Steam Deck can boot from it. So if you decide that you want to play on the arcade, you shut down your Steam Deck and then reboot holding down the volume down button and the power button. It's gonna bring up your boot menu, you select the SD card from the list, dock your Steam Deck and you are off to the races. Okay, let's get Batocera installed on our SD card. It's actually really easy. Head on over to batocera.org and download the correct image file. They have a specific one for the Steam Deck, so make sure that you grab that one. Once you have it downloaded, make sure that it isn't unzipped or unpacked in any way, just leave it exactly the way it is, and then you're gonna need a program which will write that file to your SD card, essentially flashing the SD card with the operating system. Uh, there's a lot of different ones that you can use. I used one called Balena Etcher, uh, but Batocera.org's website has a whole bunch that they will recommend to you depending on what operating system you're using. Now, if you're using Etcher like me, the next thing you're gonna do is click on Flash from File. You're going to select the Batocera image and then click Flash after you select which drive you're going to put it on. Make sure that you are selecting your SD card and not some other drive because it will overwrite anything that's on there. Next, what you're gonna do is boot into Batocera on your Steam Deck. You're put your newly flashed SD card into the Steam Deck. You're gonna power it down and then hold down the volume down button and hit the power button. It's gonna bring up a menu, select your SD card from that menu and it will boot into Batocera. Next up is getting our ROMs in place. Once Batocera is booted, go ahead and hit the menu button and then you're gonna go down to network settings. Under network settings, you have to activate Wi-Fi because it's off by default. Once it's activated and you've connected to your Wi-Fi, then you're going to use SFTP to transfer the files wirelessly from your computer over the network to your Steam Deck. Okay, once we've got Wi-Fi turned on, the next step that we're going to do is use an SFTP manager in order to connect to Batocera. You can do this a bunch of different ways. I'm using a program called FileZilla. Once I've got my SFTP manager opened, I'm going to make a new site. Uh, I'm going to put in for the host the, the IP address from Batocera. You can get to this by looking in your network settings of Batocera. The user is going to be root. The password is going to be Linux, and that's pretty much the same for all of them. Once you're connected, all you have to do is drag and drop your files from your computer over to Batocera, and then just wait for the file transfer to be done. Once it's all done, then you have to set up your controls. Now the last thing that you're going to have to do is set up your controls so Batocera knows what you mean when you push these buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my start button. You may not know where your start button is until you hit all of the buttons, so you'll have to do a little bit of trial and error there. I'm gonna come down to controller and Bluetooth settings. Once I'm in there, I'm gonna go into controller mapping. Now it's going to detect that I have three game pads installed. 
The red on this side is gamepad one, this is gamepad two, and gamepad three is the actual Steam Deck. This is awesome because it means any changes that I make to these two do not affect how the Steam Deck works. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one by holding down a button. You'll see that it said drag and rise there. And then I'm gonna go through and push all of the buttons that I need. I want this button right here to be A, this one to be B, this is X, this is Y, this is start, this is select, up, down, left, right, L, R, and I don't have buttons for the rest of this stuff. So all you have to do is hold down a button in order to skip that. So I just hold down a button, it skips it and says not defined, hold down a button and skip it, and I keep doing that until I get to the end. And now I'm all ready to play, all I have to do is bring up my arcade, I'll start up X-Men just like before. As it starts, I'll insert my coins with the select button. So whichever button you hit as select is the insert coins button. And I'll pick Cyclops and you can see that I'm playing the game. So there you have it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this modification. And if you wanna know more about Steam input and tips and tricks related to that, make sure you check out this video right here. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.